Welcome back to Weekly YouTube Channel. I'm your host Owen, and on this lovely morning, we're going to be doing another prospect profile. If you have not seen one of these before, you can go check them out in the playlist on my channel. It's doing all, has all the uh, 2023 draft content. Basically, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to go through and break down a couple films on the player today. Uh, and that today's player is going to be wide receiver from Cincinnati, Tyler Scott. The most infuriating evaluation I've ever done. Just so much to like about him. And yet, he just doesn't let me like him. Like, the drops are so bad on tape that, like, I want to grade him high. I want to say, like, oh, I want to get this guy in the draft. I want my team to draft this guy. But uh, it's just so every play he has a good play. Then you're followed up by an atrocious drop, and it's like, what? why, why? But we'll get into it, uh, and just for an example of what I'm talking about, uh, if he got even, like, a, knocked out a, a handful of drops, because I think his drop percent rate is at, like, 10%, something like that, which isn't atrocious, but, like, when you see it on tape, it looks so bad, especially with the timing of some of them. Uh, and I graded him super low in his hands. If he got even... A respectable grade for hands, or even a good grade for hands, he'd be like a third round prospect. But right now, I have him graded as a fit, as a five, and we'll get into why that is. All right, our first clip's gonna have him up here at the top of our screen. It's just gonna be a straight go route. The corner's gonna stutter a little bit on the back read, uh, on the backfield read. But the whole point I'm trying to point out with this is that he just has some really good burner speed. And if you give him any sort of advantage, he's going to get top, over top separation on you. And there's no way you're going to be able to stop him. So yeah, takes the, out, takes the go route. Corner stops, look at the mesh. And yes, it's an overthrown ball. And Cincinnati had a problem with a lot of overthrown balls, deep ball accuracy in the offense. So he didn't have the crazy production he should have had. But like, he's just an absolute burner. This corner, even after he recognizes it, is still losing ground after he turns and flips his hips and starts running. So he's really good at getting that downfield separation. This isn't like a great route he ran or like anything he did specifically. It's more in the corner, not taking his eyes off the mesh soon enough and getting kind of stut stuttered up. But at the same time, it just shows good speed. It also shows that the quarterback against Cincinnati didn't do him a lot of favors, especially when he got this wide open downfield. So that's just a little appetizer to show, like, yes, he's a burner. Uh, he has some decent route running, especially when it comes to being set up by his speed. Uh, they have to respect his speed a lot. Uh, his releases actually are pretty good. He plays most on the outside, Cincinnati, even though he's only 5'11", 185. They played him on the outside, never really in the slot. And he has an overall well-rounded game for, like, an outside deep threat that would be, like, a number two or a number three deep threat at the NFL level. It's just the hands, man. But this one is not an example of that. This is just a show that, yes, he is a burner. He does play on the outside. And not much more after that. We'll get into more deeper stuff after this. This next one's going to be another quick one just because you can't really see him. He's here at the bottom of the screen pretty cut off. So I'm going to have to really talk about what you're supposed to see here. What he's going to do is he's going to take a kind of slight stutter step to the outside before hard bursting inside, getting a free release uh, with some really good footwork. Just overall, like I said, he has good releases, having a lot of practice playing on the outside. He's going to do this little out step stutter burst upfield, immediately stacks the corner. Like, you can't ask for a much better release on that, especially from a guy this small where he's able to take those one, two steps outside, burst upfield on the inside, the corner can't even really get any contact on him, and then he immediately stacks the corner. If this was an on, you know, accurate ball over the shoulder, he might take this with a touchdown. It's about at the 15 where he would, or at the 20 where he would have caught it. So I just think that again, he has a lot of experience on the outside. Good, re he's really good releases. Um, his route running is pretty good. Uh, not like the best, but he's pretty good. He has that deep, deep threat speed. He could be, he could have been a great number two prospect, a great number two wide receiver prospect that could have gone in the third round, maybe even late second round. But man, we'll we'll get into it. But this is just, it, it's disappointing looking back at this now because at this point when I was reviewing him, this is only a couple of plays in. I was like, wow, I'm really liking this guy. He's got some good traits here. He's got that speed. He's got that release. I'm really gonna. I, I don't understand why people aren't higher on him. And then I, I got into it. So it's just kind of sad looking back at it now. But like I said, we'll get into the negatives. Now here we're going to have his first quote-unquote drop of the game. Um, it's not really one. It's kind of just an uh, inaccurate pass in the end zone. He does actually have a great route here. They're playing super off coverage of him within the 20. He's going to come up here, 
do a little head fake post, be wide open in the end zone, and the ball is just going to be a little too high for him, and it's going to go off his hands. Like, you might be able, you might say he should have had that, but like he's a smaller guy. He doesn't have like the biggest catch radius, best like vertical or anything like that. So it's it's going to be a little harder for him to pull these balls down, um, especially when he's running full speed towards the back of the end zone. I think this one's not really on him. However, the route is great. He gets a little head fake nod up here at the top. Boom. He had a little head fake. Corner is going this way now. He's going towards the sideline, and he's cutting back inside. Gets right behind. Double post kind of play right there where the inside safety is getting sucked into the inside post. And after he sells that fake to the corner, he's able to just get a free wide open route right into the middle of the end zone. Just a little bit of an overthrow. So, yeah, I'm not going to blame this drop on him there will be ones we will talk about later that will be playing on him just more show of like hey he's got good route running he uh can make these like little nod head fakes and cuts at full speed like he doesn't have to slow down and try to sell these which really gives the corners time to recover he's able to be going at a fast speed and make these little nods and little route cuts uh just to get open again poor throw not his fault so down here, we're just going to have another example of a good release with more over-the-top speed. He's going to come out, do a little outside fake before bursting up field on the inside, and is totally outrunning the safety. Another poorly thrown ball down deep, so it's not really going to be a big play that you'll see on like many highlight reels, but it's something that just shows really good aspects of his game that he has down pat. So we see here, outside fake, bursts inside, gets the cornerback to go out the flat. Maybe the cornerback was already going out there, but regardless, he influenced them the slightest bit. Then he starts moving up field and just cooks the safety. It's a uh, you can't really it's not you can't really teach speed like that. He's got really nice speed as well as that, those outside releases and those uh, releases in general are just from experience playing on the outside. And a lot of guys that were his size with his skill set really aren't playing on the outside that much. So it's kind of rare to see in a guy his size, his skill set, um, his level of competition even. So I think that's, like I said, that's good. I just think that he has other areas of improvement he can have, but I think he has a solid chance of being a number two in this league. Um, he just needs to have those easily correctable things corrected. Okay, and then the last thing we're going to talk about here is, one, the amount of separation and respect they give him down here at the bottom of the screen to you know, because of his speed and things like that, but also his run after catch ability, because I think it's something that it's maybe not his best trait, but he's still pretty decent at it. So he has his free release into the out, able to fight off two dudes, sidestep Drew Sanders, and then keep fighting to get some more yardage. Um, in a game that they only need two touchdowns to come back, and there's a lot, of, there's enough time left. Yeah, I think this shows like uh, what I was setting up beginning with the first play was that they they give him a lot of respect on these routes where they give him a lot of cushiony off coverage. Where he's able to make these out cuts or these like some digs or comebacks and get wide open, uh, so that's really where his good route running comes in is either working down the field and uh, like I said with the post we saw earlier, or coming back towards the line of scrimmage after setting it up with speed, which they give him a lot of room for here. Gets the out, makes a catch, kind of a body catch, but I think the hand positioning was good. He has one guy here. Spins out of the tackle, which avoids the other guy. Breaks Drew Sanders' tackle. And then still trying to fight for extra yardage. Gets sat on by like four dudes. But, I mean, he's a hard, he's a hard worker when it comes to running after the catch. He's got some... He's got, he's got quick twitch, like we see when his releases and stuff. Uh, but I think that he isn't like an elite, you know, elusive dude in the open field. He's going to have some good burst up field. If you get him into open space, he should be able to eat up yardage. And just fights hard. Hard worker. So, I don't think this is going to be necessarily a knock or really a great positive just want to show both the separation he gets on routes um because they give him so much off coverage and just his effort and kind of elusiveness in the run after the catch uh you can decide how elusive you think this play is but i think it's pretty good uh, i think it's more hard work than elusive but at the same time you can go either way with it all right for this next play we're going to be playing watching him against ucf he's going to be motioning up top here towards the top of the screen we're not going to be able to see his release but what it is is this is going to be a deep coverage where the corner is going to come off and play a deep zone. This linebacker is going to come out and play in the shallow zone, the the hook curl, the flat here. I'm sorry, not the hook curl, the flat here. And he's going to come off on a slant, and the quarterback's going to have to throw this with beautiful timing, like get it right behind the linebacker, and he just plucks it with his hands, gets a field, loses his balance. But like I said, 
he has good these good plays with his hands where he's able to make these catches, you know, really pluck this ball out because this ball is coming hot. It's going right past the linebacker's hand. He needs to hold on to that. And he has that quick t- quick twitch after he gets the ball. He's good. He transitions well from receiver to runner, which is why I think runner after the catch, maybe it isn't a big strength, but it's not a weakness at all. Uh, I think he does really good in after the catch, uh, especially with transitioning and then just getting extra yards with burst. Now he loses his balance here. He probably maybe would have been able to put a move on this guy, potentially run away from him. But I think this is an example of once we get into the drops a lot, he's got decent hands. He just needs to be more consistent with it, and that's really what hands really are, is just consistency with technique and grip strength and things like that. So gets a free release from the covers they're running, really plucks the ball out, transitions quickly to a runner, has a good upfield burst to get the first down, but unfortunately he stumbles and falls. Just a quick little appetizing route in this uh, game to set up some more stuff we're going to be talking about. So a theme we're going to have with this tape against UCF is going to be a really good play followed by a drop. A really good play followed almost immediately by a drop. So now we're down in the red zone, and he's going to be down here at the bottom of your screen. He gets this free release upfield. He's going to run a little out route like he does, and just can't control it at all. Uh, again, egregious drop here. It hits him right in the hands, hits him right in the face. There's no more better placement, or I guess it was a little behind him, you want to say, but like hits him square in both hands. He has eyes on the ball. It's not like he's trying to turn up field and run with it right away. I think this is just concentration, grip strength. His hands are in the right positioning. It's it's just got to be more. Con- you gotta you gotta get that one, especially because it's a first down. Almost 20 seconds left in the half. You need to pick up this first. You'll be first and goal. <clears throat> and I think this is just, yeah, there's a lot of these on tape where it's just an egregious drop. We'll get into the worst of them at the very end. But, yeah, good play, followed up by a drop, is the story of these last two films, really. More this one than the last one. The last one's just drop after drop. This one, it's good thing, drop, good thing, drop. It's, it gets it, The first tape, the first two tapes, really, I couldn't show you the Indiana one. It was a little too choppy, but... First two tastes were just like, good stuff, really good stuff. You're getting super hyped up for him, and then drop, 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 drop. So, all right, another good play. They're giving him a lot of off coverage, respecting that speed, and he gets a good cut, gets wide separation on the out, gets the catch, gets a field, first down. Like I said, short, little, quick, like, oh, yeah, he's got some nice route running, especially when he sets up with speed. They give him his space because he's a burner like that. He runs away from the linebacker coverage. And he's able to make a catch and turn good from a receiver to a runner. Gets up field, picks up the first. Like that's that's a solid play right there. And then literally the next bullet point I have is a play where he drops the ball. We'll get to that right now. All right, so you can see him for right now. He's gonna come off the screen in a second because we're gonna do hard play action. But he's on the, the outside here. Now this ball is a little overthrown. I mean, it hits him in the hands. You'd maybe like when the rule is like it hits you in the hands, you secure the catch. It's a falling catch. I don't expect him to make all of these. It just doesn't help that he drops the routine ones as well, so you'd maybe hope he'd make it up for it with these spectacular catches. But this is him working up this field, selling the speed before coming down to the comeback, away from the linebacker coming out into the flat. Really wish the quarterback, even if he put a couple couple inches more inside, it would have been probably a better chance for him to catch it. But at the same time, hits his hands, just isn't able to complete the catch. Drop followed by a good play, even in the good plays where he sets up good comeback routes and has good separation. Uh, just another drop. Uh, I, I count this as a drop. Again, it might be a little harsh, but it's you got to be extra critical with this stuff, especially when it's a theme in their play. So not the best throw, but still a drop. Another really small play that we're not going to focus on too much, but I think is really indicative of what he can do good. He's faced up here with a press man corner, takes a good inside step fake, and then gets the free outside release. The corner can't even like, really get a good jam on him, clears out those defenders, like that safety has to come off. Opens up the out route for the slot. I just think this is a pretty good release. He's, the ball, I don't think it's ever intended to go to him on this route. It's supposed to be going to one of these shorter routes to pick up the first. But I just think this is a really good release. And uh, something I wanted to highlight, like I said, I keep harping on him for the drops and stuff like that. But he has good release, has good speed, has decent route running uh, at full speed and working back, like hard cuts and things like that. So I think as a number two receiver or your deep threat, he can do pretty well because like again these releases aren't normal and typical in guys like him with his skill set so uh just gotta clean up those drops man which speaking of which our final play for this film is going to be him on a comeback or a curl however you want to call it they're going to do a design quarterback rollout 
He's going to be up here at the top of your screen. You're not going to see his route or anything, but the quarterback rolls out, throws a ball. It's a little low, but hits him right in the hands, goes up into his arms, hits him in the chest after it hits his hands. He's got multiple points so he can catch this ball. He just needs to go down there and dig it out from the ground. It's short of the sticks. It's third and 13, so I don't know why they're throwing this ball specifically, but that's besides the point. I think that's a very catchable ball. He's wide open. There's no like contact or pressure on him. It's a short completion, and he's not able to dig it out, even though it hits his hands, and he's falling into the ball. Uh, I think that should be a routine catch for him. And yeah, even though it's a good separation on the route, it's, I think it's man coverage here. It's just got to clean up the catches. Like You're not in bad positioning. You're not using bad technique. That's the technique you want to use to go down there and dig the ball out when it's low. You just need to secure that. And it's going to keep showing up and haunting you if you can't secure it. And you're the guy, you're the Nelson, new Nelson Aguilar who can get wide open but can't catch a cold. Uh, so I, I, can't get, I can't get past that. I want to get past that. I want to like him from all the things I'm seeing. But stuff like that just drags me back down. All right, this is going to be our final game. We're going to watch him versus Tulane. Uh, this is going to be the winner host the ACC, uh, or AAC championship game. He's up here at the top. This is going to be something we haven't talked about yet. Uh, but his run blocking is not great. Uh, I think he has the effort. Like It's not like he doesn't want to run block. Where, like you see here, he gets up there. He gets in the guy's face. He just doesn't have the best technique. He doesn't have the footwork. He didn't have the footwork to stay on the block. He gets pretty, uh, gets shed pretty easily, and the guy ends up making the tackle. So you'd like a little more better technique. I think he'll have to get coached up there. So I don't think he's going to be like a number two right away because usually you need your number twos to run block. For most teams, I guess, I would say at this modern day in the age of the NFL, but uh, especially when you're running light, uh, like you're running a lot of three wide stuff. But he doesn't, I mean, he doesn't, like, he's not nonchalant about it. He doesn't, like, sit, sit there and stare at him in the face. He tries to get hands on him. It's just he needs better technique. Um, it also doesn't help. He's only, like, 185. So uh, I don't think you should add more weight. It just should be, you shouldn't expect a lot more of this out of him. Maybe if he has better technique, he can hold on to this block a little longer and let the running back get past. But, yeah, just thought I'd highlight that. It's a weakness, but nothing to really look too deep into. Okay, we're going to see him over here. He's to the right of this number one guy in the slot. He's just going to work across the field with his quarterback who's rolling out. And he only has one catch this game, but he has a decent amount of targets. It's because of drops that he wasn't able to get more than a single catch in this, which was his final game as a college player. So he gets this release, comes across the field, works well on the design rollout. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Ball's a little behind him. He makes a good readjustment. I think that's a great readjustment to a ball being thrown behind him as he's running full speed across the field. Uh, I like that. He gets hands on it. This is going to be a catch until, yeah, he gets lit up. So, I mean, I don't really blame him for that one. He gets checked pretty hard. Uh, but everything else in this play was good up to that point. Like, he gets the free release. He is able to run across field. Keeps step with his quarterback. Gets in front of him repositions to the ball that was thrown behind him, and then he catches the ball, quarterback kind of left him to die, and he dies. So, yeah, the ball is dropped. I don't blame him for that one, though. Uh, I just wanted to highlight this one more for, yes, he has another drop on tape on, on this one, but he has good body repositioning. He has decent hands when he wants them to be decent hands, uh, and like he works well off his quarterback here. They obviously have some good chemistry, so... Uh, I think he can develop that with an NFL quarterback a lot too. So that's why I wanted to show his play. It wasn't for the drop specifically. It doesn't uh, hurt to show another drop for him just because, like I said, it's going to be a real big emphasis of his entire summary. But I think this is a good play overall despite not being able to complete the pass. Again, not really his fault. Gets absolutely mollywomped here. And so here's his lone catch of the game. He's up at the top of your screen. A lot of the separation here. I believe it's going to be just a regular out at first, but the quarterback's going to scramble to his right. And this just shows, like what I was talking about before, how he has good chemistry with his quarterback. Initially, when he's rolling right, he starts moving more upfield, but as he's getting closer to the line of scrimmage and this guy starts getting sucked down, he moves closer towards the line of scrimmage, gives the quarterback more of a throwing window to get it out fast, and does a great toe-tap catch at the sideline, gets the first down. I think this is great working off of your quarterback. Uh, wide receivers doing well on scramble drills is a kind of hidden talent that a lot of people don't really look a lot look out for. But yeah, he has the out. He's open on the sideline right now. Quarterback starts running right. He moves upfield to get away from the linebacker. Linebacker starts getting sucked down. The corner who's up above him starts getting sucked down. So he moves back towards the line of scrimmage. 
makes it an easy throw for his quarterback. The quarterback puts it, puts it on him, and then he makes a good toe tap right behind the sticks, gets the first down. So I think that's good chemistry with the quarterback and good knowledge on how to work off a scrambling quarterback and work off the defenders that are around you and how they're reacting to the quarterback scrambling towards their side. Uh, just an un- un- undervalued uh, trait, I think, I look for a lot in receivers, and when they do it well like this, I give them huge props. Anyway, like I said, he had one catch this game, and it is because of a mix of drops, and we highlighted some of the drops with the big hit, but there was some of them I just like, okay, I'm not going to highlight it because I knew I had this play coming up. Last play of the game, 4th and 15, you're down 3. 4th and 15 is a long way, but with his speed, he's able to get behind the sticks, Ball's on his chest and just drops it. Like, you have the speed. You got open. You got wide open behind the sticks. The ball is on your chest, and it just bounces off. He maybe needs to turn his hands out and try to catch it with a hands catch instead of just going with the chest. Maybe he was trying to do more of a run after catch scenario where he's going to get it and get upfield. Uh, but, like, that's atrocious. Like, you got, you did what you didn't think you were going to be able to do. You got open behind the sticks in a 4th and 15 situation. Game on the line. If you convert this first down, you can keep driving. You're down a field goal to host the AAC championship. And you drop it off your chest. Like, good post route, I guess. Gets behind the defensive uh, linebackers. You know, understands where the sticks are. Good throw by the quarterback. It's a little bit of a duck. Uh, it might even be t- get tipped a slight bit, but like it hits him right in the chest, guys. And this is like this is the one where at the end of the game, or at the end of the, all of this, because it was the last play I saw of him entirely. I sat there and thought back, like, damn, those were a lot of drops. And I went back in my notes and read how many times I wrote, oh, drop, oh, drop, oh, drop. And I'm like, this one is so egregious. And I go back and look at all the ones I marked down as drops, and I'm like, yeah, he this he has a problem. I like so much for him, and then it's like, but he has a problem with drops. He has good hands on occasion, like when he plucked that slant route or when he repositioned and made that catch in this game before he got lit up. But other times there's these routine catches, especially in clutch scenarios like this one or when they were down in the red zone and it was like 20 seconds till halftime and it would have been a first down to make it first and goal. Like He just has these egregious drops that hit him in the hands, hit him in the chest. And I, I, I just can't get past that. If he can get drafted in, like, the fifth or sixth round, and you that's kind of a steal if you can get him in the sixth round, you bring him in, and you just put him in front of a drugs machine or have him just work with your quarterback every single day to really get that chemistry built up and just to make sure he can get comfortable with his hands. Maybe a good wide receivers coach can tweak his technique even the slightest bit to help him out. That would be great. But other Because, like, I think he has number two wide receiver talents and traits. Uh I don't think he's elite with his catch radius or anything like that. His hands obviously aren't great. His route running is pretty good, even though it's kind of more of a limited tree. It's based off of just deep routes and or uh, coming back after setting those deep routes. So I think he could expand that a little more, but I think the routes he does run are pretty good. But, man, the hands are just – I just keep coming back to the hands. I need the need to the need to get fixed. The need to get cleaned up. That is the evaluation on Cincinnati wide receiver Tyler Scott. This is the most infuriating review – or evaluation I've ever done. Uh, if you enjoyed these, you can go down to patreon.com slash keelpro88, K-I-E-L-P-R-O-8-8. Pay $1 a month, a single dollar, and then you'll be able to see all of my write-ups, all of Caleb's write-ups, all of our Dynasty stuff, and our other unique analytics things that we're working on right now with the guy we have specifically there for math and analytics and stuff like that, which I think is going pretty well. Uh, I'm also writing for Defiant Takes Football, uh, if you want to support me without paying any money, you can go check out my articles over there. I'm writing player profiles for this draft class, especially the top 50. Uh, me and Nick Merriam, who I've had on the show, we're both writing for them. And the more we clicks we get on there, you know, the better it helps us out financially and you know, just in standing with the company. So uh, I'd really appreciate if you guys go ahead and check that out. Check out the Patreon or just check out other stuff in this channel. There's other ways to uh, support me for free. I'm having really good growth right now. So I'm trying to hammer this one out before I go to school so I can edit it and get it out. Try to get a video out every day for you guys. I have a couple of these prospect profiles lined up. So other than that, uh, I hope you guys have a good one and I'll see you in the next one.